Okay, so today we're looking at something a bit different. This is a Pentium 3 single board computer and it's a whole Pentium 3 with RAM, graphics card, everything crammed onto this single board. And we're going to use this plus the backplane over here to hopefully build a retro gaming PC. Interested? Let's give it a try. So for those that don't know, industrial PCs are kind of backwards versus the normal PC that you're used to. Instead of a motherboard with a chipset and a north bridge and south bridge and, and CPU, all of that is squeezed down onto a single card. And then that card, and it, and it really is a full PC on a card, plugs into a backplane like this. And the backplane is very simple. It only really serves two purposes, which is power. So ATX or AT power goes in here, and then it's provided to the PC through these slots. And expansion. So the PC connects to the PCI and ISOBUS through these slots. And then you can add your add-on cards here on the backplane. And this is great in an industrial setting because the backplane is super simple. It's just sockets and power, and it's very unlikely to fail. And the machine, which is the complex part, if it fails, you just take the whole card out, put an identical PC back in, and you're back up and running. So you don't have to troubleshoot, you know, is it the RAM, is it the CPU? You replace the card, you're good to go. So it's weird, it's, it's backwards, but I hope you can see how it works and why it's useful in an industrial context. So today we'll attempt to turn this thing that's really not meant for gaming into something that we can play our DOS and Windows 98 games on. This exact model is a MITAC MSC373 computer. It's got a 440BX chipset and a socket 370 processor. In this case, it's a Pentium 3. On the board, we've got four DIMM sockets for PC100 SD RAM. We've got a PC speaker. We've got two IDE sockets for storage, a floppy connector, some other headers for serial and parallel and USB. And then down here, we've got a real-time clock and CMOS battery. And then I think this is the VGA chipset, although I've never heard of it. It says chips B69000. And then lastly, we've got this weird connector, which I believe is for an LCD panel. On the back, we have 10100 Ethernet, a VGA port, and PS2 connectors for mouse and keyboard. And last but not least, we have what's called the PIC-MG 1.0 interface. This has an ISA part and a PCI part so that the PC can connect to ISA and PCI devices via the backplane. And it goes into this weirdly long socket here, which if you look closely, you can see it's just a PCI connector and an ISA connector lined up next to each other. Looking at the backplane for a moment, you can see it's got four ISA slots and three PCI slots, and two of those are in the PIC-MG arrangement that we just talked about. Unfortunately, I can't find any documentation for this, so we'll have to go on intuition. Like I said before, I do know that this thing is a Pentium 3 and that supposedly it works, but that's about it. Before we get this all plugged in, you can see that this backplane supports both AT and ATX power. So we need to double check our jumpers to make sure we're set up in the right way. Luckily for us, there is a guide on here and it says for an ATX power and an ATX single board computer that we have here, we need to set jumper one to position two and three. Jumper one is just here. So I'll just set those positions two and three. And then I think we're ready. So let's connect it in. It needs a bit of force. And then monitor in, ATX power, 
turn it on. Okay, we can't power it up because we've got no power button. So let's take a quick look. It says that the power button is connected across jumper J3, which is just here. So if we short J3, it should come on. Let's take a look. Okay, we've got some life. And just looking at the board here, we've got these LEDs. Unfortunately, they're not labeled and I don't have the schematic here, but most likely these are telling us the power we have to the various voltage rails. And I would guess that this first one, because it was on before we powered up, is just a power indicator. And then these others are plus five volts, minus five volts, plus 12, minus 12, and then lastly, 3.3 volts. And you can see that the 5.5 volt is off, which means that power line is missing. And that's expected because we're using an ATX power supply and modern ATX power supplies don't provide minus five volts. And it should be okay for us because there's only a handful of old ISA devices that need minus five volts. And I don't think we're gonna use any of those. As an aside, there is a project called a voltage blaster, which is an ISA card that you can plug in and it will translate your plus five volts into minus five volts and add that if you need it. But overall, I think we're working, which is good news. Let me grab a few things and we'll be right back. Okay, we've got PS2 keyboard and mouse. So these go straight into the SPC on the back. There's one and two. For storage, I have this IDE to compact flash adapter. And on the flash card, I've got it prepped with DOS and Windows 98 setup files. So we'll connect that to the IDE slots just here. And then lastly, we've got this ISA sound card. It's made by Aztec and it's a bit of a sound card modem Frankenstein, but somewhere on here, there's a Sound Blaster Pro support. So it should do the job and it goes just here. Right, so we're all connected. I think we're ready for games and benchmarks and the other good stuff. So let's power it up one more time. So straight away, we're booted to DOS. That's a good thing. If I run mem, okay, we've got 64 whole megabytes of RAM. Let's check the sound. So Unisound, initialization done, that looks good. Okay, let's play a game and hear the FM sound in action. So Keen for. Okay, that works great. Next, let's try something with PCM audio. So Tyrion.
Okay, it sounds great and it runs pretty well too. So next, let's take a look at performance and we'll use Phil's fantastic DOS bench. Okay, Doom, max details. 120 frames per second, speedy. So, Quake. One hundred and twenty frames per second again. Let's quit. Next up, Sysinfo. So Sysinfo says we have a Pentium at eight hundred and fifty megahertz. I think it's actually a Pentium three at seven hundred and fifty, but as you can see here, it is leagues faster than four eighty sixes or early Pentiums. So we've got a really fast machine. And because we've got a fast machine, we'll take it up a notch with some SVGA DOS gaming. So back to DOS and Duke 3D. SVGA mode on. I'm used to those SVGA modes being super slow, so DOS is looking really great. Let's try out Windows 98, and lucky for us, I have the Windows 98 setup files right here. Okay. That was super fast. The installer said 60 minutes, but it was more like six. First things first, let's check the device manager. Okay, yeah, we've got that chips 69,000 graphics. We'll have to give that a performance test, but I suspect it'll be terrible. So let's start simple. We'll start with DirectX Diag. Okay, as expected, there's no direct 3D acceleration at all, so we will need a graphics boost. And I have, I hope, what we need. This is a Voodoo 3 PCI version. So in that goes. Okay, we have the 3D. So let's try 3D Mark again. Okay, so Direct3D works great. Next up, let's try OpenGL. So, Quake2.
since we've got a voodoo, we have to try a glide game. So let's go for Unreal. Prisoner eight four nine escape. Prisoner four prisoner. Okay, that was awesome. Now, are we done? Um, okay, one last thing. There are a handful of games that support Glide natively in DOS, and Tomb Raider with the right patch is one of them. So let's try that. Okay, time to wrap this up. Overall, I'd call this a mission successful. There's been no industrial PC impediment here. It's worked just like a regular PC. I would like to find a nice chunky AT case to put this in. And then I can have a retro setup where I can switch out these single board PCs. So if I want a 386 or a 486, I can put one of those in. And if I want to go more powerful with, say, a Pentium 4, I could put that in. So overall, I think this could be the key to quite a flexible retro setup. Let me know if you want to see more industrial PC content. And as always, questions and comments down below. Enjoy! <laughs>